Particle Simulator Worksheet for Physics in Everyday Life. So I've brought the simulator up here on my computer, and the first question asks, how is the radiating electric field produced when radio stations broadcast? What's producing the signal? Why should this produce a signal? Well, I'm going to take a hint from the simulator and go ahead and wiggle this electron. And I notice that when I do, I'm producing this wave and these vectors that are within this wave and it travels out in both directions uh, and that's displaying well I've got it selected to display the force on the electron because uh, electrons are negative the force on the electron is actually opposite to the direction of electric field so if we select electric field instead it shows us a slightly different picture in that the electric field vectors are opposite in direction uh, to the direction of those uh, force vectors. But we get the same kind of picture there. Uh, and so how do you produce a signal at a radio station? Well, fundamentally, you have to move charge up and down in the antenna. Um, and the moving charge up and down in the antenna is producing this signal. The signal's an electromagnetic wave, but it's actually only showing us the electrical portion of this wave. Why would this produce a signal? Well, the thinking is when the electron is up here, then the top of the antenna is more negative and the bottom of the antenna is more positive. And when the electron is down here, the bottom of the antenna is more negative, the top is more positive. And both of those produce uh, electrical fields. And so if you move this, you actually have these changing electrical fields that propagate out from the antenna in truth at the speed of light, but the simulation is slowing it down quite a bit so we can see what's happening. How does your antenna work, question two, to detect this electromagnetic signal produced when radio stations broadcast? What are the physics principles that support your description of how the signal is detected? So over here is our receiving antenna. And so we notice that when we wiggle the antenna in here and that electromagnetic wave makes it there, we do, in fact, get some slight movement of the electron in the receiving antenna. Because when the electric field is, for example, in the upward direction in the region of this antenna, that will push the electron down. Again, electrons get pushed opposite to the direction of electric field. Uh, and when the uh, electric field is uh, down, then the electron gets pushed up. So it gets pushed by the electric field that it receives from the transmitting antenna there. Now, it didn't get pushed very much, and that's because I'm not very good at moving this thing back and forth in a regular fashion, but there's a built-in oscillate function, and this produces much smoother uh, electromagnetic waves, and that's what it suggests we do in step three. So uh, there, you can have the curve with the vectors or just the curve, depending on what you want to look at. Um, and then uh, here's the radiated field. There's also an option to use the static field, but I think the visuals are better when you have uh, the radiated field. So we're experimenting to answer the rest of the questions on the worksheet. What does this curve represent? Well, the curve right now is representing the electric field portion of the electromagnetic wave that's being sent out, uh, the electric field, and then these little arrows are representing the force from that field. So the force from the field on an electron is opposite to the direction of the electric field because electrons are negative. Uh, so the best option uh, of these, is it the line of electrons being sprayed off of the antenna that then cause the receiver electron to move? No, nope. we only need, in this simulation, one electron in the transmitting antenna, one in the receiving antenna, so these in between are not actually moving charge. Uh, is it the path that the electron will follow? Again, no. The electron stays in its antenna and oscillates up and down. Uh, so it is not the path an electron will follow, nor is it the evenly spaced electrons moving up and down between two antenna. One of the interesting things about electromagnetic waves is they can actually move through empty space that doesn't have any protons, electrons, or any other particles in it. Uh, so in fact, A, B, C, and D are all incorrect because they all, in some way or another, involve charge moving between these two towers, leaving D, 
uh, which is the correct, or E, excuse me, which is the correct answer. The curve represents the strength and direction of the force that would be exerted by the electromagnetic wave on the electron. All right, uh, question five, if the amplitude is increased, does the wavelength increase, decrease, or remain the same? Well, let's find that out. We've got slider bars here. So the wavelength is the position from, say, a peak of one wave to a peak of the next wave. And so uh, it's roughly, it looks like um, about one wavelength is about the distance between these two antennas. Because when the electron up here is at the top, the electron up here is at the top and the uh, field vectors point down when the field vectors over here point down. So one wavelength is approximately the distance between these two antenna. Let's see if that changes if we change the amplitude here. So if I make the amplitude of the transmitting antenna bigger, the whole amplitude of the wave gets bigger, the motion of the electron in the receiving antenna gets bigger, but the wavelength is still the same here. So the amplitude is actually independent of the wavelength. All right, I'm gonna go back and reset the amplitude to the middle value and give the system a little bit of time to adjust. Now we have several true and false statements. True or false, if the oscillation frequency of the transmitting electron decreases, the oscillation frequency of the electron in the receiver is instantaneously affected. So you can see the electron moving up and down here, and the number of cycles per time that it does so would be the frequency of that oscillation. So if we turn the frequency of the transmitting antenna way down, does the receiving antenna respond immediately? So let's go ahead and find out. And the answer is no, you might have noticed it took some time for that signal to get between two towers. So they do not in fact respond immediately to that shift in frequency. It takes whatever time it takes the electromagnetic signal to get from one to the other. Statement seven, the electron in the receiving antenna oscillates at a lower amplitude than the electron in the transmitting antenna because of the distance between the antennas. Well, again, the amplitude would be the maximum displacement of this thing. So the uh, equilibrium position is here, meaning the amplitude on this transmitting antenna is, oh, I don't know, a couple of centimeters in the simulation. If we look over here, here's the equilibrium position and the receiving antenna's electron is in fact moving up and down less distance than the transmitting antenna. Uh, and that is because of the distance between the antennas. Electromagnetic waves, like all wave phenomena, drops off in an, in an intensity with distance. So if we kept going further and further and further away, we would see this effect greater and greater. Unfortunately, the simulation doesn't allow us to do that. Uh, next statement. If the electron in the receiving antenna oscillates at a lower frequency than the electron in the transmitting antenna because of the distance between the antennas. Well, again, uh, you could count cycles per time period, but you can also just count the period. Period and frequency are inverses of one another. So if we start at, say, the top here, and we just start counting 1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi, 3 Mississippi, 4 Mississippi, 5 Mississippi, it's about 5 seconds. Let's do the same over here on the receiving antenna. 1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi, 3 Mississippi, 4 Mississippi, 5 Mississippi. The period's the same over here, which means the frequency is the same. And fundamentally, you have to tune your radio to whatever frequency is being broadcast by the radio station you are attempting to listen to, or uh, your cell phone has to tune itself to the frequency that is being broadcast to it when you are receiving a telephone call. True or false, if the frequency of oscillation increases but the amplitude remains the same, then the electron in the transmitting antenna experiences larger accelerations. Well, let's see if that's the case. So I'm going to jack up the frequency on the transmitting antenna, and we're going to see if this over here has bigger accelerations. 
So truthfully, you have to think a little bit about the physics you know to answer this, because it looks like it's still going up and down the same vertical distance here. Uh, but is the acceleration any different? Well, the frequency has increased, meaning the receiving electron is going up and down more times per cycle. And in doing so, uh, then it covers a greater distance, or rather the same distance in a smaller amount of time, which means that, yes, indeed, it has to speed up and slow down more rapidly in order to complete the increased number of wave cycles uh, in the same space of uh, distance that it moves there. So the acceleration has actually increased. Statement 10, if the amplitude increases but the frequency remains the same, the electron at the receiving uh, antenna experiences larger peak forces but oscillates at the same frequency. So I think we've seen this, but we'll go ahead and increase uh, the amplitude here. So now the transmitting antenna is moving a greater distance those waves have gotten to a bigger amplitude. And that receiving electron is also has a greater amplitude, moving up and down over a greater distance. So it would have to experience, again, larger peak forces. Now the amount of time it's going back and forth is the same, but the distance it travels up and down in the receiving elect uh, antenna rather is larger. And so in order to accomplish that, you need bigger accelerations, and bigger accelerations uh, require bigger forces. Question 11. If the frequency of the transmitting electron decreases by a factor of 2, it will now take longer for the electromagnetic signal to reach the receiving antenna. So again, you can watch a piece of this wave and see how long it takes to get here. So I'm going to try to count from a peak and... We'll go 1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi, 3 Mississippi, 4 Mississippi, 5 Mississippi. Again, it takes about 5 Mississippis for that transmission to happen. So if we make the frequency less, uh, does it take longer for the signal to reach there? So let's crank the frequency down. Now it's going to be a little hard to see, but we're going to start here. 1 Mississippi, 2 Mississippi, 3 Mississippi, 4 Mississippi, 5 Mississippi. It is, in fact, the same amount of time. Changing the frequency does not change the amount of time it takes the signal to reach the receiving antenna. That's fixed by the speed of light. So changing the frequency uh, changes the period and also changes the wavelength of the wave, but it does not change the amount of time it takes to go from point A to point B. Uh, now, it's probably easier to see this if we start with a high frequency, but the next statement, if the frequency decreases, the wavelength decreases. So now the wavelength peak to peak is less than the distance between the two antennas. But as we diminish that frequency, that wavelength now has gotten greater, and the wavelength now is approximately the distance between the two antenna. So as frequency decreases, uh, wavelength actually increases. The electromagnetic waves generated by the transmitting antenna produce currents in the receiving antenna. Well, recall that current is the movement of electric charge. So if this is my electron and the electron is electric charge, it's moving in the antenna, and this would actually be considered an electric current. The final statement, when the electron in the transmitting antenna is at its peak height, the electron in the receiving antenna is always also at its peak height. Well, right now, peak, peak, pretty close. But if we adjust that frequency to a different value, I think you can see that that's not always the case. So right now, transmitting is at peak, but the receiving is near the low point of that oscillation. And so uh, where they would be in terms of whether they're both peaks in the cycle would depend on how many wavelengths of the wave exist between the two antennas. But it is not always necessarily, in fact, it's often not going to be the case that when the transmitting electron is at the peak, the receiving electron is at the peak as well. All right, so those were the things that we wanted you to look at in the simulator. Uh, hopefully you actually got to play with the simulator yourself, but if not, uh, hopefully this video guided you to the answers on that worksheet.